there, welcome to this video about how to prepare an operating budget. There are actually several different parts and pieces to this, so we will go through each one a step at a time. Problem has a scenario where we have various different pieces of information. We have our sale price, we have what kind of products, raw material products need to go into it, how long it takes to build it, our average labor price per hour. Um, some sort of guidelines as to how to look at ending finished goods and ending raw materials inventories, which we'll get to in a moment. We have our expected sales units in quantity for all the different months as you see listed. And then we have some variable and fixed manufacturing overhead pieces of information as well as selling and admin expenses. So got several things to do with this. The first thing that we want to do is come up with our budgeted sales revenue. And that's a pretty simple calculation. All it is is taking the expected unit sales times the sales price. So in the case of April, we have 300 units that we're expecting to sell. And our selling price is $30. So 30 times 300 is $9,000. So be sure to write these down because I actually have three related videos for example, another one is actually going to go through how to create a budgeted income statement. So this budgeted sales revenue becomes very important in that calculation as well. Next, we need to come up with production units. If you've ever worked in a manufacturing facility, you know that if I produce 100 products this month, I'm not going to sell 100 products most likely. So part of what we're trying to calculate is given that we will carry some inventory, how much product do we actually have to produce? So this gets a little tricky. You may actually have to just follow along with what I'm doing as far as this part is concerned. And you may have to listen to it several times as far as how these calculations are working. But this is the basic description as I can do it at the moment. Is So first of all, what we do is we take the budgeted sales units. So for April, May, and June, those have been given to us in the problem. Then it tells us that our ending finished goods inventory it tells us that ending finished goods should be 50% of next month's sales. So 50% of next month, we look at May and we go 400 is the expected sales. So half of that is 200. So in the month of April, I am considering my ending inventory needs to be at least half of next month's expected sales. What that does also is 50% is expected to be next month. I also need 50% of this month to be used. So 50% of 300 is 150. That's my beginning finished goods inventory. So 150 is my beginning finished goods inventory based on this month's unit sales of 300. So then I take the budgeted sales unit of 300 plus 200 minus the 150, and I actually have to produce 350. Even though my budgeted sales are going to be 300, I need to actually produce 350. Those calculations are the exact same process that you would go through for each month. Now when you get to June, of course, you have to take into account the July sales units, expected sales units. But all of those work exactly the same. Now the one thing to note in that far right hand total column is that when we're looking at ending finished goods inventory, we're only taking the 200 from the month of June and the beginning finished goods inventory, we're taking the 150 from April. So those two, we're not adding across on our example here. I hope that makes sense. If you have any questions about that, please ask below. Now we want to calculate budgeted cost of raw material purchases because those units that we produce, so for example, in three, the 350 for the month of April is going to require two linear feet per unit of raw material. So the 350 units times two linear feet gives us 700 linear feet that will be needed to produce those 350 units. 
So the ending raw material inventory, that's 40% of next month's production. So 40% times 900 is 360. And the beginning raw material inventory is 40% of the current month's production. So 40% of 700 is 280. So our budgeted raw material purchases is 700 plus 360 minus 280 gives us 780 linear feet. That's how much we will have to buy times a material cost of $2 per linear feet. So the 780 units or the 780 linear feet times $2 gives us $1,560 that we will have to spend in the month of April to procure that raw material. So the same process is worked out through each month. And again, those in the total column, you do not add across the ending raw material inventory or the beginning raw material inventory. Those are not added across. You take the ending raw material from June and the beginning raw material from April. Next, what we want to do is look at budgeted labor. Now our labor is contingent upon what our budgeted production numbers are. So when we calculated in part number two, our budgeted production units of 350, 450, and 450, it requires a half an hour or uh, half of, you know, so we can't multiply it by one, in other words, so it doesn't take one hour of labor, it takes 0.5 hours of labor in order to produce those units. So the direct labor hours required to produce 350 units is 175 hours, because that's 50% of 350. Then we take the 175 times the $15 labor rate, and that gives us a budgeted labor cost of 2,625. And those same calculations work all the way across. Now remember, each of these things that are highlighted in yellow, those are the things that are going into your problem set on the web. And I would also keep track of these. So write these down because uh, as I said before, there's a couple of videos that are also contingent upon calculations being done here. There's actually three problems that are related to each other. Now we look at budgeted manufacturing overhead. This is using the same production units, budgeted production units that we've calculated in part two. And those numbers are just continuing through. And we're multiplying those by the variable manufacturing overhead rate of 40 cents per unit. So the budgeted variable manufacturing overhead is $140 in the month of April. Then our fixed overhead is $667 per month. And so that's not per unit. That's going to be the same across all levels of production. Doesn't really matter there. So the budgeted total manufacturing overhead for the month of April is the 140 plus the 667 gives you 807. So that's how you do those calculations across. And again, the yellow ones are the ones that you want to write down, to make sure you know what they are. Now what we want to calculate is our budgeted cost of goods sold. So first of all, what we'll have to do with that is calculate our cost per unit. So each unit requires two linear feet of raw materials at $2 a foot, and so that's $4. Direct labor is 750 because it only takes a half an hour. So our average labor cost is $15 per hour. So it only takes 750 to create a product. The variable manufacturing overhead is 40 cents per unit. That was given to us in the problem. And our fixed manufacturing overhead, it was told to us that the, there was $8,000 of annual fixed manufacturing overhead for an expected production of 4,200 units. So it's $1.90 per unit for annual fixed manufacturing overhead. So our budgeted manufacturing cost per unit is $13.80. Now we are not taking the budgeted production units. We're taking the actual sales units. So those are the ones that are given to us in the problem. So for April, our sales units are expected to be 300. We take that 300 multiply it by $13.80 cost per unit, that gives us a budgeted cost of goods sold of $4,141.43. So you do the same calculation all the way across to get your budgeted cost of goods sold. The dollars highlighted there are the ones that you would enter into your problem online. 
and I would also keep track of those for the other two videos that are related to this one. And then finally, we will come up with a total budgeted selling and admin expense. Here, this is also based on budgeted sales units, not production units. So for example, in April, we would take 300 units that are our expected sales units, multiply it by the variable selling an administrative rate of 62 cents. That gives us $186 because we're doing 300 times 62 cents. Then our budgeted fixed selling an admin expense is the same every month. So that $700, we would use that for each month. So for April, the variable selling and admin expenses is 186 plus the budgeted fixed selling and admin expense of 700 gives us a total selling and administrative expense for the month of April of $886. And that same calculation goes all the way across. And again, those yellow numbers are what you input online. And please keep track of those because there are two other videos that are building upon these this one problem. So be sure that you have your notes and that you've got all those pieces of information. I hope this helps to understand how you put together an operating budget. And an operating budget is, is really that. It's, it's the operation of your business. And it has to do with COGS. It has to do with production. It has to do with how much raw material you need to buy and all that sort of stuff. So it starts with the sales units, expected sales units, and you drill down into all the other parts and pieces. If you have any questions about that, please leave them below. I'll be happy to help you out and I'll see you on the next video.